Hey everybody, welcome to Little Kitchen Academy Instagram Live. My name is Katie and I'm really happy you can join us today. Uh, I hope we have some of our students watching today. We really, really miss you guys. Um, but if there's anybody new watching who doesn't know about us, we are the first of its kind Montessori inspired children's cooking school and we're located right here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. <coughs> Excuse me. We teach uh, students from age three right up to age 19. We run classes every day of the week and we do all kinds of amazing cooking projects here. So right now, of course, we are not able to be open. Um, so we're hoping that we can open really, really soon. We're confident that's gonna happen. But in the meantime, we are gonna be doing Instagram live videos for you. Monday through Friday at one o'clock with all kinds of different recipes and we really hope you can join us. So if we've got some students or friends watching, please pop by, say hi. If you have questions as I go along, ask. Felicity's here behind the camera and she can let me know. Um, Katy Perry's um, on, is watching right now and he's a new grandfather. Aww. So maybe he'll have a, a lot of things to say about what his grandkids are doing. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations, Perry. I think that, I'm not sure how, if your grandchild is just a baby still too soon, but um, as they grow, I mean, working on projects together in the kitchen is so much fun and so satisfying and just a really great way to bond and to learn and to have fun and to eat something delicious. Margaret's so. here too. Margaret's saying hi. Hi, Margaret. So today we are going to make bruschetta. Uh, bruschetta is, I don't know, it's often like a snack or an appetizer, sort of like an open-faced sandwich topped with something fresh and delicious. So it's let's delicious. get started. I'm going to give my hands a wash here. Bruschetta is one of my favorite things to eat at any time of day. It's great with like scrambled eggs, it's great. Um, in the morning, it's great just scooping it out of the fridge with a spoon. It's true, and it's a really flexible recipe. You can use what you've got, you can take out what you don't like, add something extra that you do like. So I'm gonna show you a pretty uh, classic, typical type of bruschetta today. And part of the reason I chose that is because we're gonna be able to use some of the ingredients from our beautiful fresh green wall which is an indoor aero garden, which is absolutely amazing um, for, for growing herbs, vegetables. We've got fresh tomatoes, fresh basil growing there now. Awesome. When we do have classes in session, we try to incorporate our green wall, our aero garden as much as we can. And the students, they just love being able to harvest the, um, the fresh produce. It's uh, a lesson in you know growing and yeah. plants really fantastic so and the kids love to wait and see when the tomatoes are ready like absolutely. they're dying to eat those tomatoes yes so when fun. a student comes over a period of four weeks they often can almost see the whole life cycle yeah. of the plant and it's really really cool it we also um, get to grow some really cool things one of the most popular things that we have is a fresh stevia plant and it's yeah. not super common not a lot of people know about it but it is unbelievably sweet yeah. So it's used as, um, commercially, it's used as a sugar substitute, but it's great because it's not chemicals, it's all natural. Yeah. Um, but if you just tear a little piece of the leaf off and taste it, I mean, for me, really I find it... It's kind of a distinct flavor. It's burningly sweet, yeah. but the children just love it. We me tease too. and call it um, catnip for the kids. They love <laughs> it so much. Yeah. So. In fact, some of them will come over and start their class there. I just have to go yeah. a little <laughs> snack before we start. It's we have two more instructors who are visiting today. They miss us a lot, Gabby and Janie. Oh, Gabby and Janie, we miss you too. Yeah, we, we sure miss all of our students, um, but we also really all miss each other, all the staff yeah. that works here. Uh, yeah. And we're really hopeful and confident that we'll be back at it soon. Yeah. Oh, we got another instructor, Gwen. Gwen's here too. Hi, Gwen. And again, for anybody who would like more information about Little Kitchen Academy, you can check out our website. It's littlekitchenacademy.com, and there is all the information you could need there. We are registering now for summer classes, details about what a class looks like. There's a great little video on there so you can see what a class looks like when we were, when we were up and running. And again, we really hope to be soon. Yeah. So let's get started with our bruschetta here. 
So it begins with bread. I think baguette is probably um, the most typical and it's easy to find in most grocery stores. You could use, really you could use any kind of bread. I mean, yeah. if you only had sliced sandwich bread at home, you could use that. Yeah. You could get out some fun cookie cutters and even cut the bread into fun little shapes if you like. Yeah. If you've got, you know, a, a sourdough or something, whatever you want, you can use it. So, Katie, one of our um, one of our advisors, Sue Bunda, just joined. Hi, she's Sue. Uh, she's down in Atlanta. She was like a massive powerhouse for awesome. CNN. She's she's uh, awesome to have on our board. We're thrilled to have her. Hi Sue. Well, I'm really glad you could join us as well, and I hope you like bruschetta, and maybe this will inspire you for a little afternoon snack or something for your lunch tomorrow. Yeah. So I've got a baguette here. Um, this is again super flexible. If you want to make a lot, use a full baguette or a larger loaf of bread. I'm just going to make a, a small portion here, so I'm mm -hmm. going to use about half of a small baguette here, and I've sliced it up. We don't want it to be paper thin. We want it to sort of be sturdy enough that it's going to be able to hold the beautiful tomato basil mixture that we're gonna make for it. So, I don't know, what is that? Finger width, thick maybe? Yeah. Super flexible again. So, slice up your baguette. It's gonna go onto a baking sheet. I've lined mine with parchment paper here, but it would be okay to go on without paper as well. And you never actually have enough. You always eat more than you think you're going to. It's true. And I mean, honestly, um, yeah, make extra. Once you've done just sort of the, the toasting part of it, those will last for a day or two if yeah. you don't want to top them all that day. So I've got my sliced um, baguette here, and I'm going to brush them all with a little bit of olive oil. Katie, while you're getting that ready, do you know the trick to, um, if your baguette has dried out, no. do you know how to um, bring it back to a beautiful consistency? I do not. It's, it's bizarre, and I've only learned this recently last year. So if you have your baguette that's um, sat on the counter from yesterday and it's dried out, if you put it under the tap of cold water and literally drench it, uh -huh. put it in the oven, wrap it up in tin foil, put it in the oven and reheat it, it will come out soft and mm. delicious and ready to use again. It's bizarre. I'm having trouble believing a word of that. So if any I of our watchers so. would like to test that and let us know if that actually works, it I am prepared to be uh, standing corrected. <laughs> so yeah, I mean this one, ideally you'll use a fresh baguette for this yes. just so that you can slice it nicely. So uh, one of our students' favorite tools that they get to use here at Little Kitchen Academy is what we call our pastry paint brush. Yeah. So this is a little silicone pastry uh, brush, and I really like these because I find them a lot easier to clean than the natural bristled ones. We've just had Fair With Care said she's tried it, it works. So there ah, you go, there's two people, okay. there's two telling it it's okay, it Okay, works. I stand corrected. <laughs> Soak your baguette and wrap it in foil and put it in the yeah. oven. It's bizarre and it, it's perfect. Yep. Fantastic. So if we have any students watching, Type in and let us know what is your favorite color of our pastry paintbrush here. Because particularly with our younger classes, the three to fives, we have a lot of discussion <laughs> over who gets what color of brush. And it's it can always become exciting. very important. So yeah. today I've got our blue brush. If you don't have one of these at home, if you've got a natural brush, bristle one, use that. Um, if you don't have a little brush, you could just use a little spoon. If you've yeah. got little, little ones at home, they could use a clean finger, just dip it in and yeah. paint it over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give a really nice brush of oil to each piece of our bread here. This is gonna add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of color, and it's gonna really help our bread toast up nice and golden brown. And that's what we want. Yeah. We want it to be quite crispy, again, because we're gonna be putting sort of a saucy wet mix on it. So it needs to be able to withstand that. Okay. That looks good. The color of olive oil is spectacular. You know, one of our students once said, to, when you smell it and you close your eyes, it reminds um, them of apple juice. I was there oh, for that, and what an amazing palette and yeah. sense of smell that child had, because yeah. she was bang on, especially with some of the fruitier, extra virgin olive oils. Yeah. I had never seen that before. I smelled it, and it absolutely does We're smell We're learning like apple from juice. them as much as they're learning from us, no True. question, probably even more. Okay, so I'm gonna put my oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna to wanna to keep a pretty close eye on these. They mm -hmm. take, depending on how thickly you've cut them, they're gonna take 
eight to 15 minutes in the oven, but um, we don't want them to get really, really dry. Ideally, they'll be kind of crispy on the top, a little bit soft in the middle, so just check them periodically. So I'm gonna pop those in the oven. A great refinement of the sense of smell is to wait and see if you can smell when they're done before you see when they're done. Absolutely, and when we are running classes here, uh, even from our youngest students, from three years old, we show them how to use the lobster claw oven mitts here, and of course we assist them if they require assistance, but it's a really amazing to watch um, the pride and the confidence they feel yeah. when they yeah. get a chance to put on the oven mitts and, you know, with careful instruction and with supervision, put their tray in the oven on their own. I love using the little kitchen kind of seat belt. Yeah, put sometimes we'll <laughs> stand, the instructor will sort of stand behind them and yeah, and they often feel like, oops, they might fall in. So yeah. we're there to make sure that they don't that's feel like that's going to happen. That's actually the biggest fear, I think, falling in. Proud yeah. to say, I've never had a student fall into the oven yet. Hasn't so, happened. No, it's good stuff. So <laughs> we've got the bread toasting. I've done some ahead of time, so they're ready for us here. So you can see, they're nice and golden. They're not um, overcooked, not too golden brown, but they're nice and dry. So Perfect. I'm gonna set those aside. And then I need a clove of garlic. Yeah. So ideally, you'll find a nice, big, fat one like this. That's gonna work best. If you only have little skinny ones, no problem. You might just need a couple. So we have your fairy chef mother just joined. Oh. I just had to say that. That's such a <laughs> like great, that. such a great name. Yeah. Fantastic. Welcome, fairy chef mother. And for everyone just joining us, we're here at Little Kitchen Academy, and we're doing Little Kitchen Academy bruschetta, and we're going to be using our grown in-house Arrow Garden heirloom tomatoes and fresh basil. It's going to awesome. be amazing. So, so far we've olive oil and toasted some baguette slices, and now I've taken a clove of garlic, taken the peel off. This is also a really fun job if you've got little hands helping you in the kitchen. So if you've got a nice big clove of garlic, I'm going to cut it in half, half widthwise, and with that edge that's been cut, I'm going to take one of my breads on the toasty side and I'm just going to rub the clove all over the top of the bread. And it's quite amazing, it's almost like running it over you know, a really fine grater. You get a yeah. little bit of that garlic puree and the definitely the amazing scent and flavor of the garlic. Twin mom, right two boys bread. asking, we just, we're just brushing one side of the baguette, um, sliced with the olive oil. Yep, that's what I did. Yeah. I mean, you could do both. You'd have to turn it over halfway. Yeah, yeah, I think it would be best if you did that to turn it over. The other the bottom side might be a bit soft otherwise, but yeah, one side is it's gonna be just fine, so. This is actually fun even to have the kids later on, you know, um, even blindfold them, see using their sense of smell which ones have been done and which ones haven't. I mean, that would be fun, but I think it would be pretty easy as well because the fragrance <laughs> so is strong. amazing. And I mean, because we're in effect using raw garlic here, I mean, you're not going to run the risk of burning it. Burnt garlic is one of the most awful tastes there is, and it's going to just have that extra bit of pungency. It yeah. really lets that garlic delicious garlic flavor shine through. And if we had Braden in class, um, <laughs> or one of our, he's, Braden's I think almost four now, isn't he? He would eat that garlic, just like that, that whole clove. <laughs> yes, it's true. Again, it's amazing when our students are here is seeing sort of the wide variety of comfort levels with tasting and trying, and for sure, there are some students that are, you know, very nervous to taste anything new, try anything yeah. new. And with them, for us, the fact that they're just working with those foods and ingredients yeah. is a huge win. That's it's a, a it first totally. step to acceptance. And um, then them getting to choose which garlic clove and learning how to peel it, like that's all just connecting with that garlic and giving them absolutely. a bit more of a chance to take a risk. And sure. when they participated in it, yeah. in making it, they're way more likely to be open to trying it. But on the other end, we do have students as well, as Felicity's mentioning, one of our um, regular students who's been with us here almost since the very beginning, will quite comfortably <laughs> eat a full <laughs> clove of raw garlic, <laughs> a quarter <laughs> teaspoon of raw cumin, yeah. a raw lemon, you know, amazing. So, funny. so, so funny. I've got my toast. Oh, it smells so good I already. Know, already, so yeah. good. I can't wait for us to harvest the basil because that's just gonna add to the smells in here. All right, so I've got this all ready to go here. 
And again, if you've got a tiny, tiny little garlic clove, you might have to use one or two of those. They're gonna wear down quite, quite quickly there. We have KTMRI underscore 35. He is, um, his parents are our new franchisees that oh. are opening in South Surrey and in Kelowna. Fantastic, yeah, welcome, excited. I'm glad you can join us. He's getting some tips and tricks to show his parents, I bet. <laughs> I like it, yeah. And I mean, of course, this is a little bit different than what we normally do when we're here in class where, well, we do things a little bit differently, but we're just so happy that you're able to join us here for this until we are able to open up again. So we've got our bruschetta base here. You can just set those aside and we can head over to our arrow garden to collect the few things that we need from there. All right. I'm gonna follow you down. Yeah, this is, I wish that we could um, export the smells in here. I know, it's so amazing. So right now, things are looking pretty jungle-like because yeah. of course we haven't been here very much and we're not harvesting them every single day, but we've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes in all different colors, yellow, orange, yeah, red, green, really yeah. and the most incredible basil, really, when you just walk by it. Um, yeah. And certainly when you touch it, Look it releases this. the most unbelievable fragrance. And so. while we're here, I'm going to show them the stevia that's growing right now. Yeah. Getting ready for when our kids come back. So here great, we we're growing some lemon balm there and some yeah. lavender so that we can make some herbal teas. Really, really exciting. That's so awesome. I'm going to just grab a few tomatoes from here. The easiest way to tell if they're ready is if they just fall off. The heirloom ones are tough too because they are all different colors. So if they just fall off this, off but I mean, stem, look at how beautiful at and red those are. Perfect. I'm gonna grab a couple yeah. of yellow ones here that I can see are ready. You see in there, like it's incredible. I don't know. We should have counted. There's hundreds yeah, we've harvested. They are going crazy. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. I've got a few tomatoes here. While I'm here, I'm gonna collect my basil as well. Nice. And really, this basil is yeah, it's giant. Just amazing. So I'm gonna take. Look at that quite a bit here, and it is just so unbelievably fragrant. You'll have to measure the leaves up against your hand. Like yeah. The size of this is in, it's amazing. And I mean, again, normally when we were running classes, we'd be harvesting a little bit more often, yeah. so it might not grow quite this giant. All right. Yeah. So fun. Okay. So, of course, for your recipe, if you don't have an arrow garden at home, or if you're not, I guess it probably isn't quite tomato and basil season outside yet, um, but if you don't have fresh tomato and basil at home, grocery store is fine. I think for this recipe, I mean, you really ideally are going to use fresh basil and yeah. not dried. In an absolute pinch, Sorry, I just haven't you could use that. a pinch of dried basil, but really this recipe is so simple and it has so few ingredients that you want to use fresh if you can. All right, so I'm gonna give my beautiful- Oh, it smells so good. I know, I wish, I wish we could share that smell somehow. I'm gonna give our tomatoes a little wash here. The other day I was saying, I can't remember what ingredient I was talking about, but if colors had smell, green, smells like basil like there's really no does. question yeah, really that does. basil is represents the color green so well gorgeous okay so again if you don't have your own tomatoes at home at the grocery store i really like the little grape tomatoes yeah cherry tomatoes are fine any kind of small tomato for me works best i think the seeds are smaller they have a more yeah. delicate flavor but you know if you have some roma tomatoes at home any kind of tomatoes you can use whatever you've got. Yeah, I, I mean, love the different color ones, yeah. it's so fun. And again, honestly, if you don't have fresh tomatoes and you've got canned whole tomatoes, mm -hmm. it would be slightly different, but it would still absolutely work. So you can yeah. use, um, probably I would use the pre-diced ones, but if you had a can of whole tomatoes, you could just drain them, yeah. chop them. It would definitely be juicier, but it would work out great, so. Yeah, I mean, if you did have the diced, you could just strain those first, I think. Yes, yeah, you can. Though I do find sometimes the skin on those is a little tough and not super tasty for eating raw. Yeah. Um, but whatever you've got will work. And I mean, again, bruschetta doesn't have to be tomato. There are a million things. Basically, bruschetta, I believe it comes somewhere from the Italian word for toasting. So I mean, it's mostly about having a little toasted piece of bread yeah. and whatever topping you would like. 
So you can really get creative with this. We have so. one of our recipes um, goes, we slightly season them with cinnamon and sugar and we make mm. a strawberry and watermelon one. I bet Delicious. that was a hit. Yeah. And I mean, you could do it with, you know, chickpeas, roasted garlic, just, yeah. just about anything. You, yeah. I mean, you could do, you could do a really fun one, maybe with some like Nutella and banana. I, you and I are in the same. I was that exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. So we wouldn't have any to share. We'd eat it all. That's true. So what we want to do, no matter what kind of tomatoes you're using, you want to cut them into quite small pieces so that you're able to spoon them onto the toasted bread, and so that you can take a bite um, without them sort of all falling apart. Yeah. So again, when we're running classes, our students from as young as three will all complete a recipe from beginning to end, and that includes knife work. So for our three-year-olds, and actually for most students when they are first starting, they begin with our level one knife, which looks like this. Sorry, um, Katie, I'm just trying to put this back right. on. Make it, there we go. They are wooden. They're sharp enough to cut through you know, almost anything, soft things. Sometimes doing carrots and stuff is difficult. Yeah. Um, but it's a great way to learn the proper grip for holding a knife. It's a yeah. great way to learn confidence about using a knife yeah. um, and again the, the youngest students really the we pride and the confidence that they show absolutely it's amazing to watch we so. even sometimes in our team nights we'll have mm -hmm. contests to see we'll bring out all of our knives and those ones are definitely a favorite it's true it's true so and once they become confident and are able to show us that they're able to use that knife safely and in the correct way yeah they're able to move on up to our level two knife which is, this is plastic, uh, they're serrated. This one would actually cut your skin pretty well if you weren't careful, so that's why we make sure our students are ready to use this. Can you put your hand in front of it so we can see the blade? It's just on your white jacket, oh, yeah. you can't see it. There, thanks. Good point, yeah. yeah. But yeah, these are great, and they're just, they're really, this is a larger one, they come in two sizes, this size and one that's a little bit shorter. They're just really, really comfortable um, yeah. and an easy learning knife, so great. that's great. And um, sorry, I, I forgot to bring out our level three knife. I can show you that in a moment. We'll skip over to that. And then for our older students, our teen students, and sometimes the younger students, not the three-year-olds, but the slightly older ones, that when they're confident and ready, they can go up to the level four knife. They all want that knife. <laughs> it's very coveted, yes. <laughs> Sorry, and I forgot, Alan, that's our level three knife. So that is a stainless steel blade and that will cause a lot of damage if you're not careful and you're not ready. So again, we don't bring these out until the students have had a lot of practice, show that they're able to use them confidently and properly. Um, but these are a really great little knife as well. So two of our students, Abby and Emily are here. Hi, Abby and Emily. I, I oh gosh, we just, Really miss you guys and can't wait to get back at it. Yeah. It's fun to be in the kitchen here, but it's just not the same without our students here. So, um, again, we're here making some really beautiful tomato and basil bruschetta. So now I'm going to quarter our tomatoes or whatever you need to do to make them small little pieces. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for any of our students that are watching, you can let us know what this is called. Oh, I'll let you know if let any me. students are watching, they will know because they this is will. one of the most important knife skills yeah. um, that we teach at Little Kitchen Academy and it's what to do with the hand that's not holding the knife. Yeah. And the purpose is, is obviously to steady the food on your board and also to protect your fingers. Yeah. So we'll just see if anyone can let us know what that is called. Okay. Oh, um, Abby, I'm guessing it was Abby, it might have been Emily, yelled the claw. The claw, that's she got right. It. She got this it. This is the claw, and this is the position we put our hand in to yeah. steady our food, protect our fingers. We never want to hold our fingers out like that. That's just a recipe for cutting off your fingertips. So That was a I, good pun, Katie. <laughs> so again, we teach that right from our youngest students, age three. Um, and insist on seeing it all the way up. And our, our students are, are very good at that, and they sometimes will even go home and point out to mom and dad. We have um, a lot of parents comment it's that true. the children have gone home and said, no, you're, you're not using correct you're knife not skills. You're not holding the knife right, and it is not safe. 
So we remind the students all the time, they all want the chef's knife, but we want to teach them safely and responsibly first so they can show off and they can have those spectacular knife skills when it's time. The claw is one of the um, most difficult hand uh, movements, so it's such an unnatural position. Yeah. So it's really about practice making permanency rather than perfection. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they really have to work on it that. Doesn't, it doesn't come naturally. No. And I mean, a few of the other um, knife skills that we show are to kind of pinch the blade here, and one that is really hard to overcome for all of us is to not have your finger across the top of the blade like that. Yeah. That actually does not make for a steady hand. Um, that does seem what comes naturally when you're holding a knife, but yeah. you know, we work together and we practice to get it right here. Yeah. So I'm gonna take my tomatoes and put them into a small bowl. Yum. I actually love using all different size tomatoes in my bruschetta as well. Different size, Big and different colors. Different size chunks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you just wanna have them small enough that you'll be able to take a, you know, a bite and get a little bit of everything in there, so. Emily just said that she remembers going there and making pancakes. Pancakes. I think she made, I, I think she made the gingerbread pancakes. Oh, I, I don't remember. Well, let us know, Emily, what pancakes did you make here? And, and how many. <laughs> how many and yeah, flipping pancakes. That's super fun. So I've got my quartered chopped tomatoes in here and particularly when you're using the small tomatoes, it's totally fine to leave the seeds in. Um, if you're using great big on the vine tomatoes, that's up to you. You could take the seeds out, you can leave them in. Either way is okay. Yeah. So while my tomatoes are sitting here and I'm getting my other ingredients ready, I'm gonna give them a little pinch of salt and pepper. That's gonna help start bringing the juice and flavor out of the tomatoes. And it's this, remarkable that a handful of tomatoes and basil is making me hungry right oh, now. So good. I'm very happy I Lucky get to us. eat this. You get to eat this when we're done. And we'll definitely be slicing the rest of that baguette. Oh, <laughs> yes. So, I mean, again, if you don't have access to a lovely arrow garden at home, tomatoes really are going to be in their prime probably in a few months from now in the summer. So, I mean, this is sort of controversial and top secret. If I'm using tomatoes at home that maybe aren't their most flavorful, you definitely want to use salt and pepper. Sometimes I will put just the tiniest pinch of sugar in there. Yeah. You could just do literally like an eighth of a teaspoon of honey, just something to sort of um, bring out the flavor of the tomatoes. Yeah. So these tomatoes are gorgeous and flavorful. I don't need to do that today. Salt, pepper, I'll just give it a little stir just to get that salt and pepper mixed in. And again, that salt is really gonna help pull the juice out of the tomatoes and of course add a nice flavor. Yeah. You could add a little bit of chopped garlic or grated garlic into there if you like. I think because we've got such a, a great garlic flavor on the bread, we don't need to. Yeah. Um, but you're welcome to do that. You could add a little chopped, finely chopped white or red onion would be delicious in that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to cry on live Instagram today, <laughs> so I haven't done it today. Crying contests are fun though. Yeah, it's funny. So I am gonna use my fresh basil though. So. Yeah, Felicity was saying, like, look, look at the size of that, size. big it's boys. massive. And I mean, often when you get basil that is, you know, slightly overgrown like this, it's not terribly well flavored, but I mean, yeah. this just manages to be beautiful still. So I'm going to give this a little rinse and pat dry. The basil, again, this is going to depend on how big your basil leaves are, how much you're making. I really like basil flavor, so I'm going to put quite a few in. I've got a yeah. little stack here. I'll just give them a quick rinse. I always like fresh basil too. I never like to throw the basil in the oven. You know, when we're making pizzas, yeah. I like to add the basil at the end so it's nice and bright. Agreed. So here, we wanna have little, little pieces of basil. If you've got children helping you, little kids, they can just rip it with their fingers um, right in there. Sometimes when we're doing this with our students, I ask them to see if they can make it like green confetti. Tiny, tiny little pieces. Awesome. Um, I wonder if, um, if Emily's still watching, no, Abby, if Abby's still watching, if she remembers the fancy name that we used when we were preparing the basil. Yeah, so I'm going to show you a technique here. If any of our students can remember what this is called, you can let us know, or if anybody else wants to let us know, you can tell us too. Uh, it's a fancy French cooking term, and it basically means to make little ribbons, and this is a really fun and sneaky way of doing this. It works really well when you've got large pieces of basil like this. 
So I'm going to stack a few together right on top of each other and then roll them as tightly as I can. Like lengthwise. a burrito. <laughs> we always say like a burrito here. A little here. basil burrito. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Johnny M10 says he likes his basil with an extra side of basil. Good. That's exactly what we're making today. <laughs> extra, extra, extra. And then using my claw, I'm going to hold that little basil burrito roll together and just thinly slice right down the length of it. And you'll see it comes out in little basil ribbons. Beautiful. Yeah. So I'm going to give it one more chop there. Basil bruises so easily, so you want to be as delicate with it it's true. as possible. So that technique is called chiffonading your basil, but basically it just means to cut it into little, little strips. And again, you can tear it with your fingers. Really, you can chop it however you like. We just want nice... And guess who, guess who remembered? Who? Abby. Abby remembered. Way to go, Abby. Abby. Nice one. And Brian Kern says there needs to be an emoji for basil. It's probably ah. right. All right. Okay, so. It smells awesome. It really does. So, I mean, really, you could stop here. We've got the most fragrant basil, fresh, fresh tomatoes, salt and pepper. Uh, this is totally optional. I like just a tiny little splash of balsamic vinegar if you've got it. Again, that little bit of acidity, I think, brings out the sweetness of the tomatoes. Yeah. It helps to bring out the juice of the tomatoes. So, I've got. Oh, I don't know, probably about a cup, a little more than a cup of chopped tomatoes there. So for that much, I'll put in a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. And if we were doing this in my house, we would be doing a tablespoon. Uh, my family loves <laughs> balsamic vinegar. To your taste, absolutely. Delicious. You can leave it out, you can add more. I think um, a red wine vinegar, a sherry vinegar, any of those would work. You could leave it out entirely. Yeah. If you've got one of those um, balsamic syrups, which is basically just a reduced Delicious. balsamic vinegar, which is quite thick, you can use that to drizzle over at the end. Yeah. Just give it a nice... I love the look of the um, balsamic glaze drizzled over top. It just so adds. So good. Yeah. yeah, really. So nice. So uh, I'm going to give it a little taste. I think It is so delicious. I mean, I don't think there could possibly be a better combination than fresh <laughs> tomato and basil. No. And that bit of garlic. So then to finish up, put my knife safely aside here. Got my little toast. Now, if you're making a snack or a lunch for yourself and your family and you're gonna eat this right away, put it together and eat it. Once you've assembled it, you don't want it sitting around too, too long because your beautiful crispy bruschetta, bruschetta, is gonna get kind of soggy. So yeah. you do want to assemble it close to eating. If you want to prepare it ahead, you can definitely do the toast ahead of time. You could do the tomato part ahead of time and just set it aside. If it lasts that long. If it lasts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we didn't talk about that either. Don't keep your tomatoes in the fridge if possible. They're going to taste much better um, if they're kept and certainly served at room temperature. Yeah. No question. So I'm going to just top my... Put that bright yellow in there. They're Perfect. pretty. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think chopped red um, onions would be delicious. Yeah, us. you'd yeah. want to kind of chop them finely, but I think it would be delicious. I think yeah. if you had some, like a jar of roasted red peppers, that yeah. would be delicious. Just yeah. about anything. And again, if you like it spicy, dice up a chili pepper, put it in there. Yeah. Um, whatever you like. So I've got these here. And then these are just really fun to eat. I mean, yeah. everybody, kids especially, love sort of things that you can eat with your hands. These are going to be a little sloppy and messy probably, so it's a really um, fun thing you can do together as a family. And it's a great introduction to tomatoes. Tomatoes seem to be one of our most polarizing it's produce true. here. And, you know, letting the child choose one piece, maybe choose a yellow versus an orange, like which one Absolutely. tastes better? Does Is there a Absolutely. different taste? And I mean, yeah. I do find that bread is one thing <laughs> that virtually all of our students really, really love and that yeah. will really help them to... It's a vessel. It's yeah, a vessel. Yeah, <laughs> it's a gateway to yeah. trying something new. If we have one or two more minutes left, I'm going to just do one more little quick Go variation here. I think these are perfect as they are. Another really almost universally popular ingredient here is cheese. Cheese of any kind. Yeah. The students go crazy. So yeah. we've got some beautiful little bocconcini, bocconcinini, I think these little ones are called, just again from the grocery store. They're a, a type of fresh mozzarella. So you could just cube up or cut up 
some little pieces of these. Perfect. Yep. Toss them in. Make sure you toss them a bit so they get some of that beautiful balsamic and sort of tomato dressing that's formed now. Yeah. And then you could have, that's almost like a little caprice, caprese it's salad. Good. You could even um, melt that cheese on the actual um, baguette in the beginning too. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That would be delicious. Or our, our new franchisee uh, for West Vancouver just joined, Steph. Hi, Steph. She's watching. She's, uh, she's learning uh, some new tricks and tips for her little baby, Wyatt, when he starts to form some teeth. Absolutely, yeah. And like a really soft, mild cheese like that. Once they Delicious. do start eating solids, little pieces of that. And I mean, these are very easy to cut because they're so soft. You know, yeah. we can do this with our little level one knife here. Um, yeah. If you're doing it with your littles at home, Again, really fun and tactile yeah. to just tear it right in And there. it's never going to make it into that bowl. It's going Absolutely. right into the mouth. <laughs> when we're making recipes for our students here, anytime that we are um, doing recipe with cheese, we always need to slightly overestimate how yeah. much cheese that we're portioning out because, yeah, we it's know gone. it's barely going to make it into, into the whatever recipe we're making. So, Kitty, these look spectacular. Oh, I'm very excited to eat them. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. That's we awesome. will be posting the recipe such as it is here. I hope you have a chance to try this at home. Our students, I know would be great at making this and I, yeah. I think they would really, really like it. It's awesome. Um, and again, if you'd like more information about Little Kitchen Academy, check out our website. And we will be back here tomorrow on this Instagram Live at one o'clock so we really look forward to seeing you then awesome i'm going to shut it off because i'm going to eat i, I love it <laughs> me too can't wait thanks awesome. everybody have a great day nicely done